Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Colleagues, I'd particularly like to welcome into Parliament three of my constituents and say how good it is to have you here, Eliza, VJ and Pauline from Ben Rowan. Welcome and thanks for turning up. Because the topic I'm going to be talking about is our money bill, the appropriation bill number three, 2016 and 17. And I note that bill number four provides for an appropriation of just over $905 million. And of this account, there is an $81 million in equity funding to the Australian Rail Track Corporation for the delivery of network upgrades. Now, this particular part of the appropriation bill is of real interest to people in my community. And in my speech today, I'd like to focus on the role of the Australian Rail Track Corporation. I'd like to outline some of the problems we have with the Australian Rail Track Corporation and our railway line between Melbourne and Aubrey Wodonga. And I'd, my call out for action is for the Victorian and Commonwealth Government to get together with industry and community to resolve this particular problem that's been going on for too long. <laughs> and Pauline, if I could say, I reckon you, of all people here, understand the problem with the railway line. So the truth is, I support the Australian government's financial contribution to the ARTC. They have significant responsibilities. Across five states, they manage and maintain 8,500 kilometres of rail network and each day they manage the transit of hundreds of freights and passenger trains across the network. Mostly it's a well-maintained network that meets the needs of its customers. However, in North East Victoria, the ARTC customers are both passenger and freight, and the needs of the passenger customers are not being met. For more than eight years, regional communities in North East Victoria have been frustrated by significant engineer failings on the Wodonga to Melbourne railway line. The North East rail line suffers really poor service, one of the worst in Victoria, in fact. Late services. Currently, there are 23 speed restrictions along the line due to lack of track work, and trains are constantly replaced from buses, often at the last minute, without appropriate communication to passengers. The issue was brought to a head with the ARTC scheduling track works, along the long track works on the long weekend in Victoria, leading to significant disruption to passengers. And some on the XPT were woken at 3 a.m. on the sleeper carts to be herded onto buses. And what did we hear? We heard the blame game. It's not us, it's them, it's not them, it's somebody else, go and talk to them. We made the decision ages ago, don't, don't get cross with us. But what we must do now is we must ensure safe, reliable services for the communities of North East Victoria. We've got to end the blame game and we must work together. But truly, it's the absolute responsibility of the Australian government, that's us, to ensure the infrastructure that supports all rail services is maintained at a level that allows services to run at an optimal level. We have heard from the government and the ARTC that they are meeting their contractual obligations. But when this results in the train now taking half an hour longer to get from Southern Cross Station to Albury than it did 10 years ago, there's clearly a problem. My constituents tell me that the train is running slower now than it did in Ned Kelly's time. I believe them. And the ARTC has spent over $134 million on remediation works on this line. And they advised that while the projects were due to be completed in December 2016, the majority of the work was completed in March 2016. They also advised that on completion of these works, the North East line would be of the standard of the rest of the network. But let me share some statistics with you. In February 2017, February last month, while 95.8 of services are being delivered, only 61.7 of them ran on time. 61.7. Deputy Speaker, can you imagine waiting at the Wodonga railway station for the train that doesn't come? And it's certainly late. And if it doesn't turn up, it actually becomes a bus. And I don't think you could even begin to understand the frustration of my community, people perhaps with disabilities, parents with babies, wheelchairs, luggage, you're ready to go on the train, which you love, and you can't get on the train, it's become a bus, and you, can't, you have to lug up the steps and you have to walk along the narrow passageway. And if you've got four children, if you've got looking after an older person, it's incredibly difficult. 
But anyhow, I won't go into the problem so much at this stage, just to, just in case, just to stress that the standard must be wrong if ARTC constant tell, constantly tells us that they're meeting their contact, contractual obligations. So let's turn to the role of the community in trying to sort this out. The uh, cities of Wodonga, Albury, Benalla and Wangaratta councils all got together and they formed the Hume Rail Corridor Group and they worked with our local, local community activist group, the Border Rail Action Group. And they prepared a report to show that $100 million in missed economic benefit is being caused due to the poor standard of our railway line. And they also found out that if the line was improved, almost 60 per cent of existing and 72 per cent of potential passengers would convert their non-rail trips to trains. So they'd be off the road, they wouldn't be using um, uh, petrol, they'd be on this fantastic road service that we would have. So the North East Line ensures that communities in my electorate can connect to Melbourne for in business, for education, for events, for health and uh, professional services, for domestic and international air travel. It's really important in rural and regional Australia to have public transport, but it's got to work. The North East Line is not working. So it was reported in November 2016 that only 55.2 per cent of services ran on time and that made it the least reliable of all Victoria's services. So what I really want to talk about now is that there is, the community has a resigned acceptance that our train doesn't work. They go, oh, I'm going to go in a car, I can't go on the train, it'll arrive late, or I need to go down the day before and pay an extra night's accommodation. Um, young people coming home for the long weekend said, oh, I can't get on the train. So then they do um, sometimes dangerous work of getting lifts with people or they hitch because I can't rely on the train. So we've really, really got to do something. So in this particular instance, I'd like to say that I believe the Australian government, and in particular the Minister for Infrastructure, has an opportunity to show leadership and commitment to regional Australia by ensuring that passenger services and the transport needs of regional communities are considered core business by the ARTC. And there's a very, very strong message from my community that the ARTC currently does core business around freight. They think, they know passenger services are important, but it doesn't make the money that they need. So my work has been to say, you've got to do an and. This is not a case of either or. So in 2016, I met with the Federal Transport Minister, Darren Chester, to fill him in on all our issues. And I'm really pleased to hear that Minister Chester has committed to travel the North East Line, and we hope in early April, to see the situation firsthand, and I will look forward to welcoming him. But I have to remind him that it won't be enough just to come and look and see. He must do. He must make a commitment for action. I also supported in the Senate, uh, during the estimates of two weeks ago, Senator Hinch and Senator Rice from Victoria, who, made, who asked questions of the ARTC boss, John Fullerton. And I welcome that as a result of their questions, ARTC has released details of their budget, of their contract with the Victorian government. Uh, recently, I introduced a private members bill to parliament that would require Infrastructure Australia to take into account the social benefits of proposed infrastructure investments for rural and regional Australia. Not only do we need to know that the economic benefit is going to be achieved, and maybe the environmental benefit, but also social good would be achieved. And last week, I introduced the National Land Transport Amendment Best Practice Rail Investment Bill into Parliament. This bill requires new rail projects under the National Land Transport Act to maximise benefits for communities along the railway, including passenger rail. So what it means, and Pauline, for your community, that if the ARTC or the government is going to improve or upgrade railway lines, as we, are, we know they're going to do with the um, inland freight route, that they've actually got to pay attention to passenger as well as the freight. So that was a private member's bill. It doesn't mean the government is going to accept it for debate, but it actually puts it on the agenda that from my community, passenger, freight, passenger and freight need to go together, and you can't sell one out for the other. The, the government is um, upgrading the inland railway line, um, building, in fact, in some places, new rail to take freight from Melbourne to Brisbane. And this is a fantastic um, initiative and totally has my support. However, the problem is this new freight line is going to work on our old 
faulty railway line. And we've been hearing about double-decker double uh, uh, containers, and we've been hearing of the need to renew the line and up bridges and get rid of railway crossings and make the railway line, our faulty railway line, fit for extra freight. And I tell you, that sends shivers through my community. If we can't even get the train, the passenger trains to run on time, and we have to have speed restrictions because of mud holes and faulty engineering, oh my word, what's going to happen when we have more trains and freight? So the call out is now, we've got this small window of opportunity. As, as we improve the line to take account of the inland freight route, let's make sure that any improvements we do actually give us improved passenger service. And it's interestingly, it's not automatically assured. And here I'd just like to remind the Minister and the ARTC, and if I could say to you, Pauline, and your communities, one of the problems we discovered when we were under, trying to understand what was going on here, and we met with the ARTC people, and we said, well, you're, you're fulfilling your contractual obligations, but clearly it's not, not working, we've got a problem. And the problem's been there for a long time, people have known about the problem. Can you tell us what the problem is? And the head of ARTC said, well, it's not a premium service you're getting there. And we looked at him and said, well, what do you mean it's not a premium service? I mean, we know it's not, <laughs> but, but why are you telling me that? And he says, well, if you want a premium service, you've got to pay for a premium service. And I said, well, what do you, what do you mean pay for a premium service? And he said, well, um, Melbourne to Ballarat, Melbourne to Bendigo, they've got a premium service. And the penny dropped. What I realised was that in North East Victoria, we've got a crappy train line on a second-rate contract. And I said, well, who would have signed the contract to give us second-class service? And you dig a little bit deeper and you find that it's a 50-year contract, oh my Lord, signed five years ago. So those of you who know Victoria can think, well, who in Victoria would have signed a 50-year contract five years ago? committing us to five years of below standard service, 50, well, no, 45 years of below standard service. So there's a big problem, isn't it? So we've now got to go and work with the Victorian government and say, you've signed this contract, it's going to go for another 45 years, it's below standard, we're being treated really badly, you didn't do this to Ballarat or Bendigo, why do you do it to North East Victoria, what are we going to do about it? So what's going to happen is I'm going to meet with the Victorian Minister for Transport, Jacinta Allen, in uh, Bendigo in early April and talk this through with her and say we've got a serious problem here. But the answer is not to blame each other. The answer is not to say the Victorian government was at fault or the ARTC was at fault. We've been doing that for a good 10 years. The way forward is for us to work together. So my final words in this speech, as we do the budget, as we um, the appropriation, as we agree to pass this legislation and give this money to the ARTC to uh, improve and in increase its, the efficiency of its network of railway lines, my call out is to Victorian government, the minister, to the Commonwealth government, to the minister, to the ARTC to come together on this with our communities because we all want to solve it. We all want much better public transport. We want public transport that's going to be a legacy for all our communities for 50, 60, 100 years. The train is so important to us. We love it. We want to use it, but we want it to work at a premium level. So in bringing my comments to a close, my call out to the government is come together with us as a community. Bring industry with you. Bring the Victorian government with us. Bring the unions with us. Bring V-Line with us. Bring PTV Victoria with us. Let's all sit around the table and say, well, what is it we actually have to do? How much do we need to do it? And then how, between us all, can we get the funding and the commitment to actually do what we need to do now, not into the future? <coughs> Let's do it in 2017-18. Let's the Victorian government have the budget, have the allocation in its budget. And in our next budget, let's have the Commonwealth make the allocation so together we can resolve this problem that's been hanging around far too long. So thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, for the opportunity to present my comments today. Again, acknowledge my community. Thank you for turning up. Um, and I look forward to supporting this legislation.